All right, I've welcome back for the episode of Conover Trades. Today is Wednesday, July 26, 2023. If you're not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on ConoverTrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. Anyways, let's get into it today on the Fed Day for the markets. So basically, a lot of whipsaw. Um, ultimately, for the most part, markets closing flat to positive except the nasdaq um, so nasdaq here down 33 basis points spiders up just seven cents dow up a dollar and the russell um, actually had a decent day again regional banks holding up russell up 79 basis points and showing a little bit of a bull flag there um, which you know we'll get into the regionals in a minute but obviously we got to cover a few other things first meta earnings um, that stock is up to 321 area that is coming into some weekly resistance here as well with that pivot high and this big uh, breakdown area. Just an incredible run there on Meta, though. Um, but right now, you know, we had a, a gap down open. Uh, remember, Microsoft reporting yesterday that finished down 3.76 percent there on the day. That may be a little bit of a top out there. Um, topping signal last week, really heavy volume topping tail Pierce double top. Um, a heavy volume this week, so possibly some follow through there. Um, I think right now, if there's anything left to this rally, it's going to come from if you want to be bullish, this rally, um, banks, energy, healthcare. That's what you're going to want to um, be in. I don't think there's a lot of upside here in big tech. And I think that that's starting to wear out. It is starting to get tired here. Um, calls are starting to decay market makers are starting to kind of fade fade big tech here with the futures we've seen that over the last couple of days triple q's no new highs spiders making slight higher highs diamond making slight higher highs russell not making higher highs but it's had a big thrust here um, and it's kind of just digesting that move whereas the q's you know yeah they had a nice thrust a week or so ago but we're barely where barely above where we were on this on the 20th um, where you look at the Russell, it's head and shoulders above where it was, you know, during that that time period. So I think big tech starting to get a little tired here. We talked about, you know, kind of AI fatigue. Microsoft, they did the whole AI pump. We're going to do the, you know, the $30 subscription. That was the top. Apple, next day does the same thing. Apple still holding up. This will hold up into earnings. Um, and I think big tech itself will hold up into earnings. But either way, you're starting to see that fatigue. Meta, though, did get a pump. Google also got a pump, obviously, today up 5.70%. Microsoft making up a big, much bigger weighting, and that did drag down. Also, that slid under the radar, nobody talked about today, Texas Instruments down 5.5. On volume, pretty good gap down. This is a leading semiconductor. This is after Taiwan Semi reported and, and got whacked. Tesla, Netflix, these have all come down pretty sharply. Take a look at this Netflix Weekly, too. So pretty good volume there in a, in a resistance zone. Tesla rejecting that all-time high trend line. So I think that, you know, the NASDAQ here, triple Qs are top heavy. If you're looking for the last bit of alpha here, KRE, you know, up 4.74%. So the money's got to rotate somewhere. Um, a little bit of resistance here with this, this pivot here. Um, I still like KRE for a move up, possibly even up to 55. Um, I would have liked a more of a pattern here, but it's holding up really well. We're seeing banks... Get a bid. XLF can still get to 36 right now in the near term. Um, energy, or not energy, um, healthcare is at a nice pop. A little overbought short term, but flagging here. That looks okay. And we've talked about XLE, but you know, you get a close above this area on a week weekly close. If we're closing above here, that's a negation of an inside bar on the weekly. So that's the strength. I see the strength here in kind of the old world stocks right now, and uh, less so in the NASDAQ 100. Outside of the rest of today, or here in the short term, rather, what's going on? Well, you know, we had a lot of gamma this morning at 4,600. It looked like that's where they wanted to take us on the SPX. I mean, it got really close. And then Powell said that he doesn't see inflation coming down um, to 2% until 2025, which I, I agree with him. Um, and that took the market down. We took out the lows of the day and we just basically had an indecision day. So that gamma got wiped out and it kind of went down to 45.50 and then we just closed kind of in no man's land flat. What happens tomorrow? Well, Meta's kind of giving us a little bit of a lift after hours. If, let's just keep it simple here. We take out this low um, on a close. We're going down to this trend line. 
that's what I think happens. And, you know, pro you know, by, by default or, or by association, the 20 day moving average, right? So I think if you break this kind of, you break the previous day low, um, I think that's where it's going to want to go. So I think this market's, you know, we had pretty indecisive close a little, a lot of sectors closed near the highs, transports, um, Russell, Dow closing near the highs. But right now, um, we'll give the market the upside bias to 4,600. But if we show some weakness, this is probably where it's going to want to go test. And then maybe it needs to have one more zigzag to that level. But um, that's kind of the breakdown of what happened today. Um, again, we'll go through some sectors here. Um, but again, big picture. I think um, we're going to see SPX, IWM, DIA outperform the NASDAQ. Um, we've no, you, know, you guys know I've been talking about possibly... Um, you know, as we get closer to the fall, mid-August, that's when we start to need to be a little bit more careful. That's when we could see a cyclical downturn or possibly something more. You could see a scenario where it's very similar to 2021, where the NASDAQ topped out in November, and the spiders topped out in January, the first day of January. Um, so something to keep on the radar here, but short term, We'll give the mark the upside bias till we see a real sell signal or some technical damage. Uh, triple Q's here, same thing. Um, it's holding that trend line for now. Obviously, it'll get a pump tomorrow with Meta, um, but we'll see where it closes and we'll see where it closes the week too. If we reject 380 again, um, might be a little bit, might be a little telling there on the Russell. IWM here is still flagging. That can still get to 200, no problems. Dow got to close above 355. Um, we'll see how it does on the weekly if it can get above this pivot, and then you got this one above that at 358. Those are weekly resistance levels, but the Dow holding up here for now. SMH taking a hit again. Uh, TXN lower on the day. That brought down NVIDIA as well. And you have a little micro inside bar here on SMH daily, but the trend is up. And until you break the 20 and this trend line, um, it can still hold up. But again, into double top, into a big, big weekly and monthly level there. IGV was on the soft side really all day long. Again, with most of technology down 1%, still holding trend. You know, you lose this pivot here, 355, um, 20 moving average. Then things get a little bit more interesting. You'll have some support around 345 and then down to the 50 MA there, which is currently sitting right around 340. Dow Transport strong all day long, up 2.73%. Uh, take a look here. Big pop the first, uh, first hour, really, versus the market, which is flat. So Transport's holding up okay. Where do we go to? 16.5, 16.6. And that's basically where we close the day. Um, so right in this area, you know, it doesn't mean it won't overshoot to, you know, 15 or 16, 7, right? But, and there's a gap right there at, let's see what the exact number is, 16, 8, 2, 6. So right in this vicinity, um, but transports had a nice power move. They are a little overbought here, so they may need to do some more backing and filling, but DJT holding up okay, and we'll respect the market when we see that. Um, okay, here, let's get over to interest rates because this is important. So two-year did back off a little bit today. Um, nothing crazy though. What's going on here? Well, the trend is up in yields um, and that's really all you need to know. Um, so the Fed is raising Fed funds rate. This should update soon. It's not 5.08 anymore, it's 5.25 to 550. Um, so the new level here where you get breakage in the market is probably above 525, probably about 530 on the two year. Um, but right now, trend is up, and I don't expect this to go down. I don't expect it to go down for long if it does. Um, and yields look pretty good. But right now, Fed funds rate, at Fed is still ahead of the curve, at least for now. And um, the market can still rally. That's the bottom line. Uh, Five-year finishing at 4.116. Uh, 4 Ten-year at 3.873. Trend is still up here. 30-year um, finishing at 3.994. Trend is still up here. Yields are intact. Yields look fine. Uh, housing here, XHB. That was up 13 cents. That's holding up. You still have this red bar on the daily to get above, but no real problem. Same thing with ITB. That can still make new highs. VNQ, here's another sector that could be a laggard bull, um, and that's holding up okay. I want to see how that closes the week, but that could have upside to 90 to 91 if it does break out of this trend line there. XLF, we talked about. Many times, 36 is still resistance. KRE, that can still get to 55, believe it or not. KBE, that can get to 45 to 46. Doesn't mean it'll go in there in a straight line. You'll probably have some pullbacks. You're into the 200 moving average right now, but that's where it can go. Um, and then XBD, 530 is your big resistance level. Over to energy, crude inside day, nothing terrible here. 
If this starts to flag, it's going to 82.50, 82.75. I don't see any issues with crude. Um, looks like so far it's getting follow through um, off of that that um, that move. So we closed above that weekly red bar, and we're getting follow through. We got two days left in the week, um, but it's holding up really well, and I don't see any issues. XLE we talked about. You're above 85.08 on a weekly close. That's a failure. And then X XLE, guess what? It's going all the way up here. Um, XOP still holding up here, holding that 135 breakout. You know, 145 is your next kind of big level there. And then OIH um, gap down, but again, showing strength by rallying back to the flat line down just 33 basis points. Uh, this is overbought, but um, it's overbought for a reason. I would like to see some consolidation in this, but. Um, you know, just doesn't want to give that to me right now. Net gas pulling back just a little bit there. Still has a nice little pop inside bar pattern there on the daily. That looks set up for a nice move. So no problems with net gas. That contract just rolled over too. That's why you saw the volume uh, dip down so much the last couple of days. Dollar index getting hammered as you'd expect. And we'll flip over to trading view so we can see that a little better. Um, so dollar index getting hammered. Did come off the lows though by the end of the day. Rejection of the 20 moving average. If this puts in a higher low, though, this can get above the 20, and then maybe you go test 102. Um, you guys know the weekly level is still uh, 102.56 spot four. If you close above that, it's a negation, um, and I think you have a bear trap in the dollar. But right now, still going to give it a neutral or downside bias until proven otherwise. Uh, gold here, that was green today, and I had a gap up with that contract rollover. So that was a big 40 point gap on gold not sure what to make out of that right now um i always hate with these futures markets have these giant gaps here um i don't know if you guys track like some of the soft commodities but like soy and corn recently did this um just very hard to read but either way um you know here's a pivot right there 2021 daily chart pivot daily chart level it's going to show this that we're blowing through this weekly um resistance that i talked about yesterday but let's take it with a little bit of a grain of salt. Let's see how it reacts. Does it come down and fill the gap? Um, but, you know, either way, gold with a big contract gap up there. Silver flat um, up 11 cents here on the new um, on the new day here. But did get a bid during market hours and then platinum here. Red, but still kind of flagging in between 960 and 980. Don't, see, don't really see any issues there, but I'm not doing anything with it yet. And palladium, you guys know I'm looking for that one to go lower as well. Copper holding up okay. We'll respect that move. Um, you know, we'll see if it goes and tests four here soon, but I'm not so sure it lasts all that long. Okay, Bitcoin here is on the move a little bit. So we're at uh, 29, just under 29.6 here after hours. We'll look at an hourly. We got above all these pivots here. That was resistance over the last day or so. So nice pop there on Bitcoin, getting all the way up to 29.8, 200 moving average there on the hourly um you know if you look at a 15 minute trend is starting to open up there so we'll see if that can start to confirm above these levels look at the four hour too yeah especially if you get above that 50 ma on the four hour and then above 29.9 on a four hour close this thing can really pop um so bitcoin holding up reasonably well here and we've seen it do this before right like you know it comes down it does a bear flag and then it pushes higher comes down pretends to break down pushes up pretends to break down then pushes up pretends to break out and then breaks down um so you know don't trust these moves here until we break technical levels don't trust one single candles i just don't trust that with bitcoin right now um daily you break below again you break below 28.6 28.5 then you've done technical damage on the daily but guess what weekly i mean tell me that's bearish you know big inside bar pattern beautiful pullback into the 20 moving average that's a textbook pattern you know when you look up bull flag that's it so bitcoin still looks fine um you get above 29.9 on a four hour close it's probably going to go higher it's you know probably going to squeeze up so bitcoin looks good here um, i don't see any issues right now um, lastly again back over to the spiders again we'll use the spx again 4600 slight pierce of that you know maybe by 20 25 points there's your pivot there from uh last year I think that can definitely get there. The Qs are where I'm, I'm not so sure. Uh, maybe they can make a nominal push. Um, but right now, you know, to me, the risk here, or I should say the alpha is in, you know, XLV, XLE, um, IWM, those types of names here. 
those um, kind of laggard sectors, and it's not so much in the sexy names right now. I think those are, you know, we're seeing some call decay, seeing market makers start to hedge against that. Um, and, you know, we saw, we've seen all the charts, right? The massive call buying frenzies, you know, the Teslas, the NVIDIAs. And it looks like that is starting to run out of gas here as we've had this phenomenal rally. But again, watch those levels. We lose this area on the queues, then we can go down here. Um, and, you know, each level is pretty simple. It's pretty cut out. Look at 100 MA, 50 MA, 20 MA. Um, so if we break those levels, that's where we'll look to go. But right now, I do, do think the market holds up again with uh, some of the old world stocks leading the charge. Anyways, guys, going to wrap it up here. You guys take care. Come find me on ConoverTrades.com. Talk to you guys all tomorrow.